3D printing resin rockets. There you are, welcome back. Resin rockets. The resin is Soraya Tech Blue resin. And the last time you saw that was a golf club accelerating incredibly fast towards an unsuspecting golf ball. This time though, rather than a golf related episode, we're doing rockets and I'm kind of excited about that. The blue resin when printed properly can withstand some stuff. What we did was we used the Piopoli Noir, the, or the, the, the Piopoli Noir, it's the Noir, right? Phenom Noir. Phenom Noir, is that its complete name? Like Yes. yes. The Phenom Noir of the Piopoli clan. I like it. There we go. Well anyway, that machine can print it in incredibly large, incredibly fast, and when you load it with blue resin, it really helps if you have a little heater on the inside. That resin likes to be warm when the chemical reaction takes place to solidify it into wondrous shapes. And these shapes, let me tell you, these are awesome. I printed these, like I said, on the Noir of the clan Piopoli. This, I believe, is called a fin can. I think is the proper term for it. Inside is a place to put a motor and on the inside, this side, is where a bunch of accoutrement go. So parachute and wadding and that sort of stuff. We also printed three of these. These are fins, like Huck, like Huck Finn. And Finn. Finn, uh, Jake the dog and Finn the human. These are fins and I printed them one at a time just because that way I wasn't race, wasting resin if something didn't uh, succeed. But these, uh, these printed great. I had to use support. These were uh, sanded like crazy in my garage. I had to wear a respirator because, you know, I don't want to get resin dust in my lungs. But I had to sand them to fit into the little holes that each of the fins will mount to. Actually, while we're here, so the, the fin hole on top, do you see how there's actually a kind of an internal bracket right there? Yep. That's not going to work, is it? Nope, that's gonna run right into it. So lucky me and my bandsaw, we made one of these. And so I'm just gonna give you a little preview here. Look at that. Bam. Bam, just like that. So finally, with 3D printed parts, we really can't do much without the top of the spaceship, as Matt Damon would put it. Thank God he was rescued from Mars. <laughs> this is the nose cone. And this is the part, thanks to this little ring in the back that the parachute is attached to. So. Parachute attaches to this, shock cord attaches from this to somewhere within here, and then that way, as the, uh, as the rocket reaches its uh, apogee, right? Isn't that the, the thing at the top? As it reaches that, then the motor can blow this out, bringing out the parachute and having it parachute down to the ground. This is really interesting to me because as a kid, like a little kid, like years ago, way before I ate thousands of milk duds, I loved model rockets. My dad built this uh, this little model rocket launcher, and it was wood, and it was it was uh, painted white, and there was a little test light, and it ran on a lantern battery, and then it fire rockets. And I remember, I remember it was uh, I had an, uh, an Estes rocket. It had a nose cone, and it had the body, and the base of it. The fins were actually a Tie Fighter from Star Wars. And no joke, I found one on Etsy for 40 bucks and I messaged the seller, but they never wrote back. So I'm a sad panda. But anyway, that's my history with rockets. So, printed parts, awesome. The non-printed parts. This is, it's a giant cardboard tube. I don't know what the official name for it is in rocketry, but this is the part that goes between the fin can, I think that's the right name, and the nose cone up top. Uh, I have four of them, just in case. Really, if this was for uh, toilet paper, that'd be a really big roll. These are motors. So this is the, uh, the F67-6W White Lightning trademark. A motor in rocketry has a nozzle and that's where all of the forces come out of to propel it skyward. And then, like I said, once it reaches a certain height, then within the motor, a little fuse burns and it goes pow right out through there. And this part right here, is what blows out the nose cone, the parachute, the wadding, and all that stuff. To fire the motor, you have these tiny little things that the launcher attaches to. And this little part here, this black part, gets inserted into the motor, and that's what starts the chemical reaction to produce fire, flame, and thrust. Rockets are so romantic, so majestic, you know? 
what was it? You watch Apollo 13, that movie, and there's that that really detailed shot of a rocket just just taking off for the first time. We have left off. The orchestra is playing, and it's just a it's just a beautiful moment. I love it. This is shot cord. This is uh, the stuff that connects the nose cone to the fin can, but it's got some stretch to it. If you're going to uh, use force to propel something out, if it's a stiff string, it's just gonna go burn and then stuff can break. Shock cord has some give to it. So it's going to allow things to, to stretch and absorb any sort of forces that need to be absorbed. These are called launch lugs. And in rocketry, you have a launch pad and it's got a, we're gonna use a, a, a metal smooth rod, but uh, it's the, the launch pad has the launch rod. <laughs> We'll get the name for it once we open the package. But the launch lug is what attaches to the side of the rocket body and slides down over that. And so it acts as a guide because if you just hit go on the rocket, it's going to go whichever way it wants. You don't want that. You're going to have a launch lug, which is going to attach to that pole. So it's going to guide it, hopefully, skyward. These, <laughs> these <laughs> model rocket recovery wadding. So when that motor goes pow to blow the parachute out and the nose cone off, some fire, flame, heat can be introduced and you don't want that to burn up your parachute, right? And so you have what's called wadding and it is completely flame retardant. That's the most important point. You take one or two of these and you stuff it down and it's what first makes contact with the top of the motor. There you go. We do have a parachute. This is an 18 inch sunward parachute. There we go. So an 18 inch parachute. <laughs> See if I can do it, ready? Oh yeah. Okay. Obviously this isn't, this is going to just aid in the rocket gracefully returning to mother earth. This isn't going to cause it to stay up there forever. And so 18 inches is going to give it plenty of surface area to catch enough of the air to slow the rocket down to hopefully descend safely. Because a model rocket that descends safely is one that you can reuse, else it would be a really, really expensive hobby. Here we go, this is it. This is the launch controller. And I'm just gonna rip into this box because my goodness. But look at, we. I mean, we've got a key and we turn it, or is it this one? I don't know what this is for. I'm sure the instructions will tell me. See, one of these is yellow. And one of these is red. So, so typically what you're gonna do, you're gonna arm it and then you're gonna fire it. I don't know if you have to hold them down or whatever. There we go. So listen, now that you've got a tour of the parts, the parts and the things that are gonna aid in this rocket going skyward, we do need to do some assembly. And assembly is going to be gluing fins to this, which I believe is called the fin can. And it's gonna be a, uh, measuring out the right amount of shock cord, finding out where to attach it in here, and then making sure the parachute can be wadded up. And then the only thing left to do after that is, is fly the fricking thing. So let's get to it. So just to get a size of the rocket, here, I'll show you. We're gonna get this out. This is one of the, the tubes of the body here and it slides, it's a friction fit and it's, uh, it's held in pretty tight. I mean, that's not bad. Plus the shock cord's gonna be attached down here and go up through here. So it's not like this is going to be just tossed aside. And then the nose cone goes on top. I mean, honestly, <laughs> this is huge. Look at this, jeez. All right. Anyway, now that we know the size of the rocket, we can estimate how much shock cord we need. Um, according to the internet, you need two to three times the size of your rocket. So if I was a piece of shock cord going all the way to the top and then back down, we are at roughly two and a quarter. Two and a quarter. I, I think that's fine, right? That's fine. Should be fine. That's fine. 
Uh, I also looked up how to do some knots. There's something called an uni knot, and that will attach here to the eyelet on the nose cone and somewhere in the fin can. And then I'm going to do a knot, uh, an eye knot, an eye knot. And that's where along the length of the shock cord, we can create a knot so that we can attach the parachute to that. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. And I, I, I mean, that's pretty secure. This isn't the right way necessarily to wrap a parachute, but. So obviously um, the, the wadding goes in there before the parachute, uh, all that kind of stuff. But, but honestly, honestly, right? That's all packing for flight day because now what we have, for better or worse, we have a model rocket. Um, I'm gonna, these things. This is the last piece of the puzzle. I'm gonna give it a try and we're gonna, uh, we're gonna attach the lug probably Probably right there. We'll do that before launch day. You don't need to see me do that. It's a lug, right? The hardest part were the knots. And honestly, that was fantastic. So uh, so we're gonna go get ready to launch. Actually, what I'm gonna do is catch a good night's sleep and I'm gonna eat a, a healthy, protein-rich breakfast tomorrow. Well, honestly, while we're doing that, we might have a simulation for you. So one of our friends at Siemens that we met way, way back in the day when we were at uh, Formnext, he does simulations and I believe we have ourselves a simulation of this rocket and how it's gonna travel. And so while we're going to sleep to get ready for launch day, you have a look at that. And we'll see you, we'll see you soon. Check this out. My producer, David Tobin, worked with Simon Fisher from Siemens Digital Industry Software to get these amazing computational fluid dynamics models of what should happen during launch. Accurate simulations giving us thrust force, speed, travel, distance, velocity, and temperature. How close is this to reality? Well, there's only one way to find out. We launch. Welcome to beautiful, sunny spring break capital of the world, uh, Redmond, Washington. This is 60 Acres Park. Normally you see kids and adults playing soccer, but unfortunately that's not happening right now. Uh, it's a friendly place for rocketry, class one rocketry, which I believe this is what this one is. I put together the launch pad here and it's some PVC with uh, some metal tubes and then it's got a nice metal piece there that the rocket's gonna launch against. I've, uh, I've put the wadding in here so when the motor ejects the top part, it doesn't catch our parachute on fire or scorch it because that would be bad. I've wrapped the parachute in a way that I remember wrapping parachutes from my old Estes rockets. Is it gonna work? I don't know, but I guess part of the fun is finding out. I've also inserted the motor in here. This is an F motor. I have shot C motors before. F motors are much larger. I've also put the igniter inside and I've got those out there. So all that's left, all that's left, besides Sean getting the drone up and going, is to connect the leads here, these alligator clips to those ends, and then go that way. And then we count down and we launch. That's, uh, that's it. So I'm gonna get that done because I wanna see this in the air just as much as you do. Okay, here we go. Key goes in. We have tone, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Why is it not going? And it just fizzled. <laughs> it didn't even, it didn't even ignite. Second motor. Ready kids? Okay, keep going in. <laughs> We're armed, here's tone. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah! Yeah! I don't know. Oh wait, it's over there. And parachute, parachute! Okay. David! <laughs> David! <laughs> Rocket's over there. Ran over here. Okay, David. Let's see if you can do that. Okay, you got this, David. <laughs> Careful. You're gonna have to hold it all. Yep. One of the fins? Yeah. 
Okay, that's okay. Look at that. It smells like rocket. Does it smell like a rocket? Let's see, do you wanna hand it over the top then? Okay, hold on. Good job, David. Thank Come you. on back. Good job, David. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> There's the rocket. Here, hold up that piece. Yeah, hold it up. Oh, it smells like 4th of July, doesn't it? Look at that. Broke off a little bit. That's okay. Parachute works. It went so high. It went really high. How high do you think it went? Um, 700,000 feet. That's 700. That's, uh, I, I think it, that's too high. <laughs> well, let's get this back and show everyone. What do you say? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Wow, it must have went a thousand feet in the air. David thought it went as high as the airplane, but physics says it didn't. But it still went really high. So I was, I was at the launch pad, five, four, three, two, one. I count down, and I had tone, and I held the other one down, and I was like, go, go, go. And then all of a sudden, I saw a little bit of fire, a little bit of flame, and then whoosh, right up into the air. Oh, that was good. And it landed on the other side of two fences where horses graze, and I had to have David crawl underneath the fence and then over another fence to get it but he did and it's been recovered so obviously um i haven't done model rocketry since i was a kid and i, I mean if i'm going to be honest with you i was just like this is going to be a cool video but man this was just seeing it go seeing it go up into the air seeing it take off there's something magical about that and uh man i hope i hope if, if this is something you're interested in, I hope you get into model rocketry. Find a, a model rocket club near you, do some research. I mean, this is amazing. Well, we gotta get home, it's a little cold. My fingers, I can't even feel them, but it's okay. So listen, if you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, and from an incredibly safe distance, high five. I'm so cold. <laughs> oh, dude, that was. It was awesome. It's so high. It was so high. It was almost. Uh, Higher than my cousin. <laughs> that was almost uh, like a like a storybook ending, you know, yeah. our last one. Yeah. It was very Disney. It hit the dirt. This one survived. This one did not. Oh, no. So I don't know if this body will be reused, 